I don't know if they're going sailing or if they're going flying. Today I'm going to be going up the west coast of Scotland from Largs towards Gourock, looking at some of the places that you can stop with a motorhome. Today I'm going to be travelling up the coast from Largs towards Gourock, looking at all the places that you can stop along the way. First location is Largs Yacht Haven, just to the south of the town. Uh, here you can park up and go for some nice walks around the Largs Pencil, which is the monument that you can see to the right of the van. And uh, you can look across, watch the ferries plying backwards and forwards between Largs and the Isle of Great Cumbrae. It's really windy today, so I don't know if you can see the motorhome is really being shaken about. Uh, so if the footage is a little bit unsteady, that's the reason why. And any filming that I do outside will probably have a bit of wind noise, so sorry about that. There's a little public car park here and a public slipway where you could launch your canoes, kayaks or stand-up paddle boards, whatever. I was watching a couple of people trying to launch a little sailing dinghy when I first arrived, so I took a little bit of footage of that. Uh, you can see how much they struggled with that in the wind today. All together. We've got a fantastic view from the back of the van. Looking out towards the town of Largs. And across the Firth of Clyde. Towards the Isle of Cumbrae. Heading along the A78 into Largs from the Yacht Haven, you'll come to this junction uh, for Kilburnie, the A760. If you take a right there, it leads you up into the hills, and there's a couple of places that you can uh, stop. The furthest point I'm going to go to on this video is the Wind Farm car park, and then turn around and head back down into Largs.
we'll pass by a lay-by on the right hand side that you can pull into and also uh, just above the town of Larks there's a viewpoint on the Hayley Bray. Unfortunately this one has got a height barrier on it which I think is 2.4 meters so it's no good for my van but if you've got a smaller van it gives fantastic views across logs and the Firth of Clyde out to the islands as you can see in some of these pictures that I've taken. Dropping back down the Hayley Bray, it's pretty twisty and steep, so you probably need to use a low gear. And then we'll come back down to the traffic lights and make a right turn towards logs. Next stop is potentially an important one, the uh, supermarket, so you can stock up on all the things that you might need. Uh, it's not a very big car park, but uh, as long as it's not too busy, you should be able to find a space with your motorhome. I missed my turn off here for the next place that I was going to go to, so I thought I'd go through logs and turn around at Vikingar, and I can show you that. At Vikingar, there's a swimming pool and a gym and fitness centre and a ball pool for the younger kids and also a theatre that sometimes has shows on in the evenings as well. Coming back into town, I didn't miss my turn in this time. I'm heading for Broomfield Crescent for hopefully a nice parking spot next to the grass overlooking the sea. It's a Sunday afternoon at the end of January so it's relatively quiet although there will be some day trippers out and about. In the summer months you're probably going to be really lucky to find a spot along here where you can get a vehicle the size of a motorhome in. It's only a short walk into the town which is where I'm off now. You can see the van parked over there. There's a nice piece of grass where the kids and the dogs can run around and uh, have some fun. You can get down to the edge of the water and walk along the beach. It's quite a pebbly beach along this stretch. It's still quite good fun. There's some nice things for the kids to do down here. Uh, there's a skate park and also a play park area with climbing frames and swings and slides and all that kind of thing. This is the ferry across to the Isle of Cumbrae or Millport. It's a really nice island to visit, a few places where you can park the van. I think they've delayed boarding at the moment because uh, there's a line of traffic waiting to get on and uh, it's bobbing about quite a lot. In fact actually they're moving it just a little bit further up the slipway now. Cumbrae is a great place to go for a day cycling, uh, there's a road that runs all the way around the coast and it's mostly flat, there's not much traffic. I went across there last year not long after we got the van and uh, stayed but the weather was pretty awful and it was low cloud and drizzle for the whole time I was there. I will be making a video from the island probably later on in the year, so watch out for that on my channel. Let me know in the comments if you like this kind of content and I'll make more videos doing the same kind of thing. Something to watch out for when you're getting on the ferry for Cumbrae. If you've got a large rear overhang on your van, take it slow, make sure you don't scrape the back of your vehicle on the ground. As you can see this lorry is pretty close to the ground and he's got a bit of a cutaway at the back to allow for it. I know on my van it's just flat at the back so you've got to be really careful. 
one of the things you don't really think of that much unless you live on an island is about things like the cinema. Obviously they've got a mobile cinema that goes across and shows them all the latest films. There's a few things to do in Largs, there's the amusement arcades, there's restaurants and cafes, chip shops, there's some um, kiddies fairground type rides towards the uh, northern end of the promenade. The Art Deco building to the left of the church is Nardini's which is quite a famous cafe and ice cream parlour in the west of Scotland. Next stop is this big lay-by, right on the coast, just below Knock Castle. It's a pretty busy road, during the daytime especially. I'm not sure if you'd want to spend the night here, but what a view. Look at that, all the way across the Firth of Clyde. Heading for the next stop. There's a couple of smaller parking spaces that I just passed by. They're not big enough for my van because it's seven and a half metres long, two and a half metres wide. But if you've got something smaller like a VW Transporter, you'd definitely get in there. So I've pulled in at this bigger lay-by at St Fillans. This next stop is just a very short distance up the road from the last one at Knock Castle. Right next to the water again. Getting late into the afternoon now, sun's almost setting. Only heading a short distance up the road. As you can see, I passed by a couple of other parking spaces that are both too small for the van, but again, suitable for a smaller vehicle. It's a fantastic little spot, it's just about half a mile north of the last one. As you can see we're right next to the sea again and uh, the great thing about this one is it's a nice deep lay-by pull-off where you can reverse the van in and get a superb view right up and down the Firth of Clyde. As you can see, we're just about at sunset now, sun just about to go down behind the Isle of Arran. I had planned to stop here for something to eat, uh, but started to run out of time now. Better crack on and get to the next spot before I run out of the light. Just a little bit further up the coast again, and we're now at the Meagle, 
which is a little bay just to the south of the ferry terminal at Weems Bay, uh, which is where you get the ferry across to the Isle of Butte. The nice thing about this place is that when the tide's out, there's a little bit of a sort of sandy, shingly beach where the kids and dogs can run around and have a play. The one thing that you need to watch out for with all of these stops is that you really want to be traveling northbound to pull into any of these because it can be a real pain to try and get out across two lines of traffic if you're traveling southbound. I'd even recommend going past the place and turning around and coming back um, northbound. So this is me just coming into Weems Bay, uh, ferry terminal on the left and the railway station. And then just under this bridge, there's a left turn into a private road that says no parking, but nobody really seems to take much notice of that. The Butte Ferry runs from about 7 in the morning to 9 at night usually. It's another really great island to visit and lots of places where you can stop and spend the night with your van. I'll be doing a video from there later in the year so look out for it on my channel. I'm at Inverkip this time, as you can see I'm running out of daylight, it's uh, well past sunset now. The great thing about this spot is that it's got public toilets, but there's signs for no overnight parking. It's only a short walk to the train station, so if you did want to leave your motor home here during the day, you could uh, just walk through to the station and get a train through towards Greenock or Paisley and on to Glasgow. So that's me at the end of my day out, I ran out of time in the end and uh, finished off at Inverkip. Let me know in the comments if this is the kind of content that you'd like to see on my channel or if there's anything that you think I could do to improve it. If you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Remember to subscribe and click on the notification icon if you want to hear when my next video comes out. You can see more of my photography on my website andyhawphoto.com and I'm also on Facebook and Instagram as Andy Hall Photography. I'm Andy, this is Camper Camera Go, thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.